Hey guys, it's Shingy. The role of transparency is this year's theme at the Seattle Interactive Conference. It all became clear when I spoke to Jonathan Woods, senior editor of Photo and Interactive at Time, who offers a unique perspective on photography's role in the art of storytelling. Do you still believe that you know a picture speaks a thousand words? Well, absolutely. I mean, we have a massive amount of photography that we're creating now. You know, I think there was a statistic that came out uh, late last year that said 90% of all the photography that had ever been created uh, was taken within like the last year. Some absurd statistic like that. And you think about the proliferation of digital devices and how you know photography is just something that we just do. We walk around, we take a picture of ourselves, we take a picture of our cupcakes. Yeah. But there's still a very select few organizations, time being one of them, that reveres the power of telling the right story with the right photograph. Mm. And being able to publish the most important photographs um, you know, still absolutely does not dilute the value of it. So just because there's more of it, you still got the people that are making sense of it and telling you what you need to look at and what is important and why it is important. There's a series of eight satellites that orbit the Earth, and it's 30 meter satellite imagery. And what that does is, uh, they're constantly taking pictures around the globe and they're basically you know, just using it for assessing change. But what Google did is they were able to take all of that data and stitch all those images together. So we basically, in conjunction with Google, Landsat, and Time, we made the largest video frames ever made in the history of the world. It's the equivalent of 900,000 HD TVs stitched together. So what you're looking at here is an extremely reduced version of the actual frame. Do you think that photography from a, a phone could still be as equally as powerful? It's, it's vital to its success and its evolution, not only in the way that we're evolving, mm. uh, the way that we approach photography, but uh, you know, for something to be meaningful, both uh, personally and on a you know consumption level or an appreciation level, mm. you have to respect the craft and you have to respect where we've come from to understand where we're going, to use it to inform our future. And what do you think the future of photography is? I think it's going to continue to get incredibly more high quality than it already is. I mean, if you look at uh, just the, uh, you know, the increasing of the pixels that we're using, uh, yeah. the devices in our pockets, you know, we're now looking at 12 megapixel uh, yeah. phone cameras and, and you know we used to think that that 6.3 megapixel camera that <laughs> when I came out of college it was fascinating to have this massive image and now that's like a small JPEG so uh, I think we're gonna con continue to see a massive increase in the quality uh, the clarity uh, the ability to shoot in extremely low light conditions and uh, I think that increases the burden on working professionals to really yeah identify with their craft and have a niche that they're good at. Throughout my entire career, yeah. I have a job where I can live vicariously uh, through the full range of emotions that a person has in their lives, or group of people for that instance. And it, and it doesn't matter whether we're covering a building collapse in Bangladesh or the next presidential election, there's something about photography and journalism in general that takes you there and allows me to be a vessel for that story to a wider audience. And having, you know, having an audience like Times is uh, it gives you goosebumps. I mean, it's yeah. an incredible responsibility. Well, Jonathan, thanks for you know making sure that photography is alive and well and keeping up the good work in that beautiful art form. Cheers, mate. Cheers. Thank you, Thank you very awesome. much.